Here's to another episode of Uninterrupted the Shop, full of memorable and very unpredictable moments. Cheers, Cheers. to that. Well, he brought it. You brought enough chains for all of us. No, I, was, I only had a, oh, I only had like three, and they wanted me to wear the big one, so they was like <laughs> hyping me up. So this is my favorite one. I did it inspired in like all the legends, cause it's the, my last album, Legends Never Die. So I put, you see, you can see Tupac, yeah. Jordan, Kobe, Muhammad Ali. Um, and I'm all the way on the back. Uh, <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> I only use them like for real when I all of them like this. I use them for videos or for yeah. cameras. Not even like it's really beautiful. But if I go to a show, I like it's uncomfortable. I can't be you can't running move around and singing. And even in the studio, sometimes I be mad. I was in the studio and I get tired. I start taking them all out off. Like when I went to the studio like that, probably I I, I finish a video shooting a video. I go straight to the studio I and mean, I can't take it no more. Como tú dices que te inca. It like it pokes him. Like oh, it yeah. Because exactly. yeah, I yeah, yeah, for yeah. the video, but once I start performing, or I something, have one big chain yeah, that doesn't have any pinching. diamonds on it, yeah. but it pinches. Like it I pinches. Be, yeah. first time, yo, yeah, my my wife, yeah, the first time I got to back home after a concert, wearing all the. All the chains, oh my gosh, he thought I was with oh, somebody. Oh, Claire, I got on Hickey. Oh, yeah, my God. Not oh, not oh, not oh especially with the moving around. Oh, you're the moving yeah. around. Not because yeah. it's for real. That's well, with, how it and looks. And with the moving around. Crazy. Yeah, because uh, that's the only time I wore it like it. <laughs> <laughs> but you go ahead and explain. Baby, it's the chains, yeah. baby. It's the yeah. chains, yeah. I promise. One, one chain only, you still look all, like, with oh, all the yeah. marks and, like, yeah, it looks crazy. But in the studio, do you, because, like, like Deion Sanders always had this thing, like, a guy who worked at Nike told me when they would go to shoot a commercial, one time they were on their way to shoot the commercial, and he's like, we got to go back. Because he had left his chains, and they were like, you guys yeah. want me to be prime time in the video. Yeah. I can't be Dion until I put Part the chains the uniform. on. uniform, yeah. It's the uniform. Yeah. So when you're in the it, studio making songs, do you put them on just to get that feeling? Yeah, I got to get, yeah, I got to get dressed. You got to get the feeling. Yeah, I got to get, like, dressed. But I think dressed. that's, like, I think that's like, like any go, performer, I'm, though. I get dressed like I'm going to go perform, I'm going to go out or something, because I, 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 remember, you got to feel... You gotta feel you in the character, yeah, in the zone. Start writing, yeah, you yeah, about yeah. to start writing music. You gotta feel that that type of inspiration. Oh, like his like, muse. So you gotta yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But when you're acting, do you like the minute you walk on set, are you in the character? Or is it like, no, no, no? And then when the camera's uh, it like, depends. Yeah, it really depends. Like, because a lot of times, like the moments you get to set, I don't care what set it is, it's always gonna be something that you did not plan on or that's gonna surprise you when you yeah, get there. You gotta figure it out on the fly. Why am I Freestyle. dealing with this? Like when, when, you, you know? when you was on Black Adam type, yeah, like yeah. How, how you felt in that, and that's it? Uh, For me, that was super, that was, like, that was, that, that was super legendary. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. I appreciate it, thank super you, legendary. thank Aldous you. Aldous is always pretty legendary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give you your flowers. We go way back. Yeah, no, we first met when I was uh, 17, I believe. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. Where, how? Uh, that was Girlfriends. Oh, Girlfriends. Oh, yeah. You guest appeared on Girlfriends. Yeah, yeah, I played uh, Persia's uh, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Persia White. So, like, so with Black Adam, the, the greatest anxiety I felt is, like, you don't want to get on set, you know, trying to play a superhero and just look foolish. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and dun, 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 I'm here to save the day. There's the anxiety of, of trying to stay in shape because, mm -hmm. you know, like, I got down there two months early to go prepare. And, but, and not only in shape, you're across the rock who's always in shape yeah, and yeah. superhero in real life, so right, added pressure. Yeah, he sure. just stays swole. I don't, I don't <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, there's, there's some people, you know what I'm saying, you, you look at them and, all right, cool, you know, you see them in, in real life, you're like, oh, you, you know, shrunk about two times. But, you know, that's a big dude. He's yeah. just straight in here. Yeah, he built you know? yeah, he's, 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 he's about that life. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the idea of what goes into when you step on set, for me, it's about the outcome that I want. So I'm always thinking about where, how you begin is how you finish, right? Yeah. So 
there are a lot of things to consider, especially when you're doing a, a film like this, because it's different than like an indie where you could afford a, a couple of, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying lazy, but you can afford to kind of scale back yeah, a little bit. You know, you, yeah, you, you yeah. could be messy. Well, a little the bigger bit. the character, they're going to Well, it depends more. on how low the budget is, because on, a, on is an true. indie, you might get two takes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might get two yeah. takes, yeah. Oh, if like, not one. Yeah. You better you be better on your piece and keep But sometimes that messy comes through as good, right? Because you. Oh, absolutely. It just depends. Improving and. It's it's a real organic dance because if, like you said with improv, uh, I mean look you you have, you are a queen of comedy. You know what I mean, and you have great comedic timing. If you're sitting there with somebody trying to go back and forth, because I love to improv. I used to do stand up. You know, you talking about a scene. It's best when it's organic. Totally. But if you're sitting there with somebody who doesn't have the timing or doesn't have the confidence to roll with you, it's going to throw off the rhythm. Totally. And with comedy, everything is about timing. It's a dance. And if somebody, you out here trying to salsa, somebody doing a two-step, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, but it ain't going to be fine. Have you taken a job that you really didn't want to do, A? Hell yeah. Do you, I'm sitting at home watching a TV show or a movie. You guys are in it. Mm -hmm. And you are there doing a job that you don't want to do, right? How do you still convince me at home, the consumer watching the TV show, that she's fucking killing it. But really, you're like, I well, fucking don't want to be I mean, there. first of all... Um, That's the experience, too. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 have, I have done many things in my life, jobs aside, that I don't want to do. Of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. You yep. probably learn it early with your parents. Yeah, you know what I mean? Course, like, yeah. I don't yeah. want to do this, yes. but here I am. You know what I mean? Easter Sunday, I'm not going to church. You're going to church. Yeah, you going to church. You know what I mean? And you better put yeah. on a happy face. So I, you, you get practices that in life in general. Yeah. Um, I have definitely taken jobs from money, um, I have taken jobs for many different reasons. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned is that you can find the thing that works in the job or in the thing, even if all of it is not what you want. I've also had many a day where I am either, I don't know why, can't stop crying, whatever that thing is, mm -hmm. uh, or um, I've had my stepfather passed away and I had to go to work that day. You know, I also grew up with a mother who would say things, you know, like, I don't feel good. You don't feel good or you sick? You sick, we go to the doctor. You don't feel good, you go to school. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. you think someone's going to not go to the show because I'm like, I don't feel good. No, yeah. all show those people on. bought those tickets, yeah. you go to work, yeah. you know? So it's not easy, but my what I have learned is it's not about compartmentalizing. I make space for that thing. I don't lie to myself and tell myself that thing is not happening. I'm like, I'm having a really tough day and I'm gonna show up and bring the part of me that is okay. A, a part of like self-care goes into the process and being aware of what that really yeah. means for you. Like I, I'm still in self-care for myself, but I'll be upset. Maybe I had a situation with a producer or co-star or something like that where it's like, all right, I gotta be here for a whole another four, five months and mm -hmm. I just wanna... <laughs> If this person got up. hit by a truck, I might be jealous of the truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. But you got to figure out, you're still here. You still made a choice to be here. And that's another thing is you are where you choose to be. So when you own that and you own that responsibility, a part of that experience, even if you don't control everything, you still control your movements, your motions, what you're doing mm. through it all. And at the end of the day, if you don't show up and perform, for something that you committed to that only hits you. Yeah. You're the only one that suffers. That only You're hits the you. Only one. Like when I'm on a job on a set, I don't sit there and think about, oh, I'm doing this movie for this movie, da da da, it's this purpose. There is a bigger reason to it. So anything that hits me in that time, it could be 10 of the cast members that hate me. Cool, I'm not here for you. I'm here for something beyond this moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm working not even for myself. I'm working for my purpose. It's two different things. So, it's not about making movies. It's not about being on a TV show and none of that. It's about how do we use the subtle wins to build out the bigger picture for opportunity? How do we shift or change the paradigm of the entire business that I'm in? As an artist, in, in, in whatever lane you're in, you should... My belief is you should seek to contribute more than you're going to get out because you're going to get something out of it anyway. But the more you contribute, the more you build a legacy that people learn from to continue said legacy, to continue said uh, 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 example. If you don't have the example, you have to create it. You got to be it. And for me, I'm also in a space of defining what that is. I think success is defined individually by what we deem to be worthy of our own selves. But you got to know yourself enough to know what success means. Let me ask, what was your experience working with The Rock? Anything you learned? 
He's a, a, a strategist, uh, very organized when it comes to what he's doing, how his team is managed, roll out everything. And the first thing I asked him was, brother, how do you manage your time? Because when we got to this, it was like, yo, you waking up at four o'clock, you hustling, working out, getting to work, you know what I mean? And I learned about how he organizes his business and, and prioritizes certain things. And a lot of that is in teamwork. He's got a solid yeah. team. And those people are just, nah, 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 they handling business. Yeah. And I mean, that's a part of management. It's Absolutely. like. Yeah, I always think about musicians though, because as a musician, it's so different when you think about organization, because there is no rhyme or reason why you will sit down now and write a song or tomorrow. Yeah. Meaning, meaning like if you're an actor, you have to be on set and start 8 a.m. And you can look and say, OK, we're shooting a movie in March. From March to April, I'm going to be in Atlanta, wherever I'm yeah. be, be the start time. Musicians, there's no, to you guys' life, there's, how do you find the rhythm? It's like? something that really comes out, for me, it's something that really comes out of my spirit, out of my soul. You, like, you got to feel like it. You got to feel like going to the studio, and, and you got to love it. Yeah. You go, how often you go to the studio? Like you can, for you to be one of the elite artists and big and really have a lot of years in the music industry, you really got to love this. It's weird, because that's why I'm telling you it comes out of the soul, because at the same time, I could be going through the worst moment of my life, but all of a sudden, that's the best art. That's the move when I do the best art. Well, so, speaking of that, Noel went away, but in my family, say he went to college. He went away <laughs> for a certain amount of time, but you finished your album while you were away, correct? Yeah, I wrote the whole album. He wrote the album How long? I, look, I was, it was crazy. Mom, you said that in my grand, like my grandma never knew I went to prison. She found out like, like a month before I came out. <laughs> she got, she it was, it was an extended, an extended <laughs> vacation, you know what I'm saying? It was at camp. You went to college. Like, yeah, not even, I, didn't, I never told y'all. Like, listen, I was born in a good, good family too. You know, real good family. I wasn't born in the projects, none of that. My dad lost his job. My dad used to be a Sony, Lat Latino Sony president. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I had to, so I was straight. Yeah. Was straight. So when I was like 11, 10, he lost his job. Even the bank ended up coming, like trying to take the house away, everything. So I even when I got to like 14, 15 already, when you already think you a man. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That age? Yeah, I just left my house and literally went straight to, yeah. And that's when I started my life in the yeah. streets. When my dad went to college, they told me he went to the military. I mean, to college. <laughs> <laughs> when my dad went to the federal penitentiary as a yeah. kid, they told me he went to the military. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I started my career, it was really like a blessing from God because I only, when I started, my first song that, that blew up, I, last, I started to do the, English, hip hop music, and Spanish. I was like the first Spanish artist to do the trap music. Everybody used to just do reggaeton. Of course. So I used to look. This all started, and the idea started back then when you remember when Lil Wayne dropped the Milli Lollipop. Yeah. He used to be the number one artist like in the world. I used to look at him. I used to all this back then. The Spanish music was was not on the same level as the as the English music. Yeah. Not even close. We used to like everybody used to dream about it, but. Still, the biggest artists like the Daddy Yankees, Don Omar, Teo Calderon, they was opening, opening up the doors for us, opening up, opening up. So I was like, how, how can, like, is it possible for the number one artist one day in the world to be Spanish artists? So uh, I was like, I used to look at Lil Wayne, so I was like, I got to start doing what he's doing in Spanish, little I mean, by can little. I'm sorry, can we just pause on that for a second? Because I feel like that's like it's such a teachable moment. Yeah. That question you asked yourself, is the question, like, you asked the question that brought you where you went, where you are. You could have asked any question, but you asked, can the number one artist in the world be, like, that's... that's then he went for it. That, yeah. That's, because you set a path. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's yeah. fucking amazing. Absolutely. Sorry, that's amazing. You're right. I really had a lot, all the odds against me. Nobody, even the producers, once, one of the biggest producers, look, I started with this trap music. I lasted five months, and I got caught. Right, so now I'm, I'm, I gotta do time. Oh, they, you was five months into your career? You only five months. Look at this crazy story. I went to prison and I had two, 200K followers. Uh -huh. Look at this crazy. It was crazy, because I was literally trying to get out, focusing on music, and I'm not the most talented, I'll tell you right now, but I literally, I, I could tell you I worked the most. I went to prison with 200K followers, 
Bro, when I came out with four million followers. Whoa. So, like, I so, didn't, like, I didn't became global outside. It's crazy. You obviously, yeah. somebody snuck you a phone. Somebody <laughs> 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 definitely snuck him. I get it, but, but like, come on. That's in my brain. Okay, don't focus on that. No. Focus on the music. <laughs> he said focus on the music. You're going to focus on the work. <laughs> but that's amazing, by the way. The thing Dude. Underworld's being very modest about is he didn't just make an album while he was away. He released that album the day he came out. It was a number one album. It was an atomic bomb. And like, I used to record major. so many songs that while I was in prison. How do you do that? Every month, every month. Nah, before I went to prison, uh, I used to record so much that instead of just dropping an album, I was like, now nah, we gotta, I didn't know how much time I was gonna do. So right. we had to like, estirarlo, make the most out of it. Yeah. Not just to drop make it, an album and then what? Yeah. Yeah. Then after a year, two years, three years, what well, I'm gonna drop, you know? Exactly. So I just started to divide it. One song, <laughs> This is a month. crazy story. It's a crazy you know, I was crazy thinking about also too? <laughs> each month, I used to drop a song. And while I was in prison, I dropped this song at the Tiny Produced. He was a, he's a really big legend in the Spanish community. He's like a Dre, like mm -hmm. a Dre for the Spanish community. And this song ended up being number one on Billboard while I was in prison. In the wow. Hot 100, like the song, Hotline song. Yeah. I don't even know how. And the whole Spanish culture, all the artists from the biggest legends since Daddy Yankee to Bad Bunny, Everybody was screaming Free Anuel in their shows. Oh, wow. Bad Bunny, yeah. wow. Daddy Yankee, all of them. I can't have, they even used to sing my songs in their concerts. Anuel, how, how's that feel shows. while you're locked up? The first time you hear your song on the radio, you're in jail. That's intense. What's that feel yeah. like? What's that, the moment you heard that, what did you feel like? Bruh, yeah, you know, <laughs> we used to start kicking the door because we, we used to be locked up sometimes. It was lockdown time. And yeah. the songs used to come out for the first time on the radio. All the and it was your song. Everybody Does it make it prison, harder for you used to inside listen. Sometimes now? I was yeah. sleeping, I used to hear that boom, 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 boom. I was like, yo, that's the song, put it, put it, put it. I used to turn on the radio, I used to was playing my song. Everybody used to start kicking the doors, like, excited, like, like celebrating. They used to, it was oh, so like, they all celebrated. That's what I was going to say, it didn't, make, it didn't make it harder It's for like you? a movie, it's time, like, the first time that like the song was already number one, but like I was really an independent. I was independent all this time. Not, I'm still in. So when they did the remix to it, it was with Daddy Yankee. We sing, we sing. Fucking crazy. We and sing. You had Salim, no... Elena, Farouk, bro, the other biggest artists. They, they did the remix. With... Bro, while I was in prison, that you had nothing to do with it. I didn't have crazy. nothing to do with it. They started to hit up my manager, my team. Yo, we want to do this remix, this, that, and I was like, yo, just do it. Okay. Just do it. Just do it. You tell them thank you, this, that. It was something. I don't know how to explain it. It was something like from God. It felt like it gave me strength. It gave me hope. And. It's something that I'm really, I made this promise with God, and as soon as I came out of prison, look how he changed my life. I came out with four million followers, and then after that, right now I got 29.9 followers in three years. I yeah. finished my probation, thank God I didn't violate it, I didn't come, I didn't went, I didn't go back. Anuel, you said you, you made a promise with God before you got out of prison. What was the promise? Nah, it used to be like, my music used to be really, really dark, in a sense. Yeah, and I promised God I was gonna stop with all of that negative messages and, and all of that. Yeah. Wow. And I literally That's... stopped it. And I still rap for the street and I rap what I used to live, what I what people live now, what people live all around the world. And and always making sure that always making sure I, I people know that I like I literally came out and I'm doing like the things that I rap about is old things, then I ended up in prison because of that. So I'm- You would say that. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I even be saying this. So like, I rap about the street, like, cause it's my fan base, but like, I'm here where I am cause I started to do things right. And I put all of that to the side, like, you know? Yeah. So. You keep, but by the way, I keep hearing it in the way you talk about yourself. I feel like you use language that makes the space for where you want to go. And do you think we all can do that? Yes, I do. Of course. Um, I think so, but I think... How'd you but, do it? Yeah, how do you well, do it? Well, I mean, I was just thinking about you saying that you made a pact with God that you were going to not do that darker narrative Style, yeah. in, your, in your music. Which is hyper self-aware. Which is hyper self-aware and really like a clear shift that allows you to move forward. I think... I mean, I've always been really deliberate with language. I remember saying, um, I manifest really quickly, so I have to be clear what I'm asking for. Mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise the wrong stuff and I comes my way and I would prefer to not just go where things are taking me I'd like to direct where I want to go and then obviously life happens there's so much 
life on life's terms. There's so much you can't control. Um, but you know, I, I people always say dream big, but they don't tell you you're the one that's going to be pulling it up the hill. <laughs> yeah. So imagine how big you want your dream, and then know that you're going to have to work. But that's something I want to touch on. Like even having the biggest dream and putting in all of the work still doesn't guarantee no. success, right? No. Like, I, like I think of you, and you have a smash hit and girlfriends. I believe 2008. Nobody cared. No, people care. What do you mean sure. nobody cares? For sure. Right. No, what do you mean? No, people did care. I cared. Uh, that's not true. I cared too. Oh, um, but it was it it wasn't an industry. Um, you gotcha. It oh, didn't. God. It was black people cared. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So uh, but, it didn't but, do. But what that's I so. That what was super interesting to me was uh, I read somewhere that you said you thought you'd have a bunch of offers. Oh, I thought the pearly gates of Hollywood. Talk about open. that a little bit. Well, so girlfriends. I mean, I thought I'd hit the jackpot. Um, I went from Lyris' Lounge to Girlfriends. Wow. And right. so I, I couldn't believe that I was just working the way I was working, and it was my dream, right? So Girlfriends went for eight years, and then when it ended, nothing happened. Nothing. And I remember there was a, an audition that came up, and I was so upset, uh, and a friend of mine said, here's the thing, you want to work? You got to keep moving out there, like keep doing it. And he said, if you don't go to this audition, someone's going to roll off a bus, hmm. and they're going to go, and they're going to get the role. Because another one person is not resting. No, no one's resting. No and that was a rest. pivotal point in my career, because I remember thinking to myself, you know what? I'm going to go to the auditions. If I think I have something to give, I auditioned for Blackish. If I think I have something to give, I'm either going to make a new fan, or I'm going to get the part. And it would have been easy for you to say, I've had the success. I had a hit show. I shouldn't have to audition. Yeah, it's it's not only that it's easy, it's that, I mean, we all think this, you think you did something and you're owed something, or it meant you got somewhere. But it's just not, it's not a ladder. Life is not a ladder and that's not the way it works. And, you know, even Pattern, my hair company, 10 years it took me to get that off the ground. Mm -hmm. 10 years. And then all of a sudden, you know, people are like, oh, it's like, I mean, I was, I told, I told you that seven years ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why do you think it didn't open up for the pearly gates of Hollywood? Well, I think there's very limited roles for black women still. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it's just about roles. I think it's about the storytelling. I mean, even when we were out pitching The Hair Tales, the docuseries that just aired Hulu and OWN, that I um, executive produced it was a six-part docu-series about black women told through the metaphor of our hair, using hair as an organizing principle. And when That's we great. went, I love that it, it was wonderful. And when we went out and pitched it, people don't think the stories of black women are very sexy and interesting. Do they not think that? Do they not get it, or both? Combination of both. Okay. Um, and I think you know, as black and brown people in this country and across the world, I think we we end up having to spend a lot of emotional cash um, trying to explain our worth. Always. You know, and you spend so much energy trying to explain why this is good, why this is important, why this is the thing. We don't always get enough time to get to the making of the thing. The actual work. To the, the actual, actual thing. thing. Yeah. And you get home and you're tired because you've had to prove that you're worth something. And so um, it was actually really wonderful when we got to Oprah, we didn't even have to finish the pitch. She was like, yeah, I have a hair tail. Let's do this. Why are we not doing this? You know, and to be able to see a story about black women shot beautifully where we are sharing not just the struggle of our story, but the joy and the beauty and the celebration of who we are. Um, and to finally get to see that on television, a black story about black women that is told by black women um, doesn't exist. And so I think when Girlfriends finished, um, there, at that time, like if you think back, there would be one black role in a movie or a TV show, maybe two per year. And going out for that role mm. were Jill Marie Jones, Tracy Ellis Ross, Halle Berry, Queen Latifah, mm. uh, you literally, uh, Alfre <laughs> Woodard. Everybody. Like the same role. Every, <laughs> the same role. And then of course, <laughs> at the time, you know, they would give it to Halle Berry, they'd give it to one yeah. of the stars that existed, you know, still exists, but at yeah. that time. You think of, now you think of Nia Long, I mean, Cheryl Lee Ralph finally winning, like, she's been paving the way she forever. She is OG. She Legend. did it ever, forever, well forever. And ended up having to, she was doing theater roles and she was doing all these things yeah. because where, she had all of this to give and where was she gonna give it? Right. You know, social media didn't exist. So one of the things yeah. during Girlfriends, like if you think back now, we couldn't harness our audience. Mm -hmm. It was, they were Girlfriends fans. I totally. didn't know if they were That's Tracy fans. That's something that we have right. more easy for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally. Totally. 
So now yeah. you can say, I mean, same thing when I, um, for pattern, part of what I was able to do with that is I had done the line with JC Penny, and you get to see that the brand that I created through social media actually can translate to dollars, yeah. right? C can do something other than acting and get me a role. And so you can start to parlay your uh, following, your business, whatever that is, into these different areas. I think in 2012, you know, when all those offers weren't pouring in post girlfriends, you started a YouTube. Website, you know, 10 YouTube years thing. ago, right? Yeah. Like, so what was your thinking behind that? Like, I just got to work. I got to continue to put myself out there. Like, no, it was more like, I just have so much to give. I got so much to share. And I'm one of those people, like, I, oh, like, I really like being in front of the camera. I, I like to share and do stuff. I had so many more aspects to me than plugging myself into somebody else's story. And so I just started to share that stuff. You know, and I do think that changed my career. I think it's expanded what, how people could see me. Especially, you know, for eight years you play the same role. People just, people still call me Joan. Yeah. And by the way, sure. I, I, said, I said to Kenya the first year of Blackish, I said, if by two years of Blackish, they're still calling me Joan, we got a problem. Yeah, <laughs> that's not true. And by the way, don't some actors. I, heard, I mean, may he rest in peace now, but obviously Gandolfini. Tony Soprano. Being Tony Soprano, yeah. he didn't like that everywhere he went. And I was thought about it myself. If I ever, I never met him, but if yeah. I did, I would instantly think Tony, Tony Soprano. Soprano. Yeah. I would go like, there's yeah. Tony. I wouldn't go I there. I kind James. of love it, personally. Yeah. Do you like it? I do love it. You know, it's this job that we have is one of the only jobs where people get to tell you you've done a good job. Yeah. People are coming up to you to say, what you do, what you have shared has moved me. That's it's changing, touched yeah. me. It's a, you it, like that thing too? Uh, in my experience, it, it can be uh, You're shy, a, though. A, a gifted cursed or, or, or a cursed gift. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things yeah. where some people know sort of the relationship and understand the proximity. Mm -mm. You know, um, I remember coming up. Uh, this was before the social media stuff, but somebody told me a minute ago that people would idolize movie stars, but to a degree own TV stars because movie stars, they got to go to the movies, they got to go outside their house We're and see them 50 house. feet, you know what I'm saying? TV stars, you're in somebody's house every day when they're sitting there having dinner with their family, they having in dinner bed. with you. Mentally, they create sort of a subliminal relationship with you they're not even consciously aware of, you know what I mean? So to have people constantly come up as an artist, you have to realize that's a part of the process. People are, are, are saying thank you. Now, that is where the gift is. There are some people who misconstrue the relationship and they take that ownership to a different level mm -hmm. and think they own your time, mm -hmm, you know what mm -hmm, I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's weird because you want to be grateful and gracious, and you can and should be, but there's also a point where you have to create a space for you to thrive and live within the, the context of what it is you're doing so that you can continue to do it. Absolutely. You know, you have to be able to set some kind of boundaries, and that's something that I'm coming into learning about because now, especially with the social media stuff, like, yeah, my family, I, people be hitting up my family and my sister and my mom's. I'm like, yo, don't, don't engage. I mean, yeah. You yeah. got to protect yourself. Well, I mean, I have a slightly different relationship to it because I grew up in a public family. Let's also be clear. You didn't just grow up. You know, Your no, no, no. mom is an mm. icon. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's, pay, let's Miss, pay the proper respect. Miss Your mom is an icon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I grew up, you know, the, the offspring of somebody that the majority of the world Loved. So you had to adjust to it very early. Relationship to fame and being in that world that I have had to cultivate my own version of that. Yeah. So I, it doesn't scare me um, because I, I really know the boundaries of it. I understand the privacy, the safety, the things, but I do yeah. understand. But did you, did it make you want to be famous or not? Did you want? Oh, no. You were like, <laughs> I don't want this. No, it's not that I didn't want that. I knew why I was doing what I was doing, and I wasn't going to become an actor or whatever to become famous, because that's it's not weird, the thing. It's weird, but you need it. You need what? 
fame is a part of the job. You know? Yes, but here's yeah. the thing. I think the difference is if you are invested in it and that's where your self-esteem and your validation comes from. I yeah. think once that cycle starts, then you are screwed because yeah. you become this idea that the world has of you versus who you are. Got it. And did you take yeah. things from your what you saw your mom and how she dealt with it that you use now? Absolutely. And was there some things you were like, I'm not going to do it the way she did it? Um, I think the only difference for me is that my favorite part of my life is my life. And so my mom's fame meant that she had a sense of privacy and home mm -hmm. that like is very separate. I'm much more open than my mother, but also my career, my personality, like I'm transparent. Like this is like who I was then yeah, is the same as who same, I am yeah. now. I mean, yeah. I'm, that's not gonna change for me. So I have never wanted my job to create an identity for me that made me not feel free being me. I need to be able to make mistakes. I need to be able to be human. I need space to be human. And as a result, I have cultivated a career, a social media and all that actually makes room for that. Are there any roles you had to turn down to keep that feeling and that idea? No! I'm still not there, buddy. I'm a black actress. <laughs> that is not how this works, okay? <laughs> I'm not like, you know what, that little stag, I don't want that one. Tracy, do you really, because we, from where we're sitting, you're super well, yeah. Great. Yeah. But do you, I, you do not feel that in your day to day yeah. as it relates to your career? Not necessarily as an actress. And I'm starting to feel it, but also I will say, do, do you, you know what I mean? I don't feel, look. I suffer from insane imposter syndrome, where I'm just coming to realize that now in my life. I'm like, oh, I haven't, I've been lying to myself for a long time because I, I've been in the business since I was three. And a lot of it was the fact that you're dealing with the wall that says you can't have this, you're not supposed to be here. So you gotta create measures to create opportunities. And then there's also the thing about feeling like, being made to feel like you're dangerous. Mm -hmm. In any space that you step into, yes. there's a great deal of fear, which is what leads to uh, iniquities or the lack of opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. Because people generally mm -hmm. don't want to see you succeed based off of their fear or, or their misnomers or cultural negligence, mm -hmm. right? So you grow up with this thinking, all right, how can I create a lane, but also how can I fit into this mode? So let me be safe, let me shrink, let mm -hmm. me be small. Mm -hmm. And then nowadays, when young actors ask me about the process of what it is, I tell people, take up space wherever you at. It don't matter what you're doing, how you're doing it, what's going on. Um, to your point about being in, still knocking out the work, getting that hustle. You know, for me, over the years, I call that assigning a purpose to your pain because there's so much pain that drives a lot of artists to great things, but eventually destroys them if they don't know how to yeah. You know, right. and 100%. I was like that for a minute because I was in a stage of, of, of suffrage for a very long time and wasn't aware of it because it was normal. You know, you, you're sitting there. How did you figure out you were in that place? And what was it? Yeah. I have a daughter. I was not a man until I, I had my daughter because now you have this person that's depending on you to get it right, but you gotta figure yourself out. And thank God for, first of all, my family's awesome. Family is like mom, sister, brother, and, and you know, my pop, we worked through the years to figure out our relationship because he wasn't in my life when I was a, a kid, but uh, as an adult, I mean, I was like 13 years old. I called pop like, look, bro, <laughs> what's up? Why am I doing your job? What's up? We had a real conversation. Really? <laughs> Yeah, but I had I learned through that time he was also an individual who didn't have all the tools and the assets needed for 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 where Good he job. was at with his responsibilities. I was raised on survival. Those survival mechanics will teach you to push your needs or your happiness or your joy back. Hmm. So you can do certain things to get the job done. Hmm. I remember, like, give me like, an example. Well, like, I put, when I was 30, 36 now, when I was 30, I was getting out of a five-year relationship. My ex at the time asked me, where's happiness on my priority list? It wasn't there at all. Because sometimes, you know, growing up, when you're raising survival, and I'm talking about my family, we done been through it. You know, we used to live in our car. We've been homeless a few times. 
you know, we've had people try to come and take our lives. You know what I'm saying? That's normal. So you grow up with this hustle. And when it comes to, oh, I want this or this is going to make me happy, sometimes in those situations you think that or you're taught that if I go for this, this is going to harm me or shut me down, hold me back or kill me. Because to choose happiness, you have to be vulnerable. So the to choose mechanism love. you build, right, to protect yeah. yourself. So you don't even know how to engage sometimes. And for me, because I got this little person who is nothing but love, I don't have a choice but to be vulnerable. I have to be open. I have to look at myself as an individual and reassess my relationship. I got to divorce myself from the old me and come into who I'm supposed to be right now. I'm at a point in my life where I'm at the highest place in my career and I can't see it because I still have a trouble with saying that I'm successful. That happens to all of us. Sometimes we're a little bit lost and we even accompany the, the biggest goal we wanted to, but we don't feel that. It doesn't give you the thing. That happiness you thought or it was that coming. peace or that, that, you feel me? So yeah. I've been through that a lot. And like two years back, I went through that. And right now, it's for the first time I'm feeling the, the, that, this light that I felt at the beginning of my career. And even though I came out of prison and everything went great, yeah, but right now is when, like, I'm really, I'm valuing everything more than, more than ever, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I know what's having it all and losing it when I went to prison, yeah, but, and then have to bounce back. So then it's like, okay, I gotta, now what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna sit here and what? Or I'm gonna, yeah, I didn't God. even, yeah, I just keep working, like, I put all my faith in God, but things just not gonna happen, you know? But, but I don't know, what, what drives you today? Because is it fear of not having a number one? Is it like, what, what, what makes you show up every day? You haven't had any musical failures. Everything's been a success. It's just the hunger of wanting to be great. Mm. Of wanting to accomplish greatness. Uh, uh, of failing right now is, is not an option right now. Mm -hmm. And there's too many people that depend on me, too. So it's like... Can I, I ask you? You say you fight for greatness. And it's a lot of... Millions of people out there will look at you and be like, oh, you're great. I'm just listening to you and listening to your, your mentality and where you're at. I'm like, bro, you're already great. Do mm. you see yourself as great? Or do you see yourself as reaching for something? Like, how do you chasing perceive yourself? Yeah. yeah. I see myself chasing something. Mm. I know I, I, I've accomplished a lot of big things and even great things, but... You know when you still, when you still know you can do, you, you still know you haven't reached that, what you mm, want. Mm, 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 mm. You ain't there yet. Maybe it's just <laughs> us being hard on ourselves. Yeah, I'm saying we are just so ourselves. competitive. Yeah. And, and but we just want to be so great that that's what great, greatness is. It's just keep driving, driving you. To, is there such thing as I don't think a there's limit to greatness? I, no, and no. I don't think there's a place that you can get to. I think yeah. it's, and this is the thing though, that it's the process, right? That's what I'm yeah. saying. It's because, not the thing. Yeah, yeah there's always going to be uncertainty. There's always going to be stuff that doesn't work. There's always going to be all of that. And I think the biggest change for me, I think what I've realized is there's no destination. There's no there there. Yeah. No. There's no there's no place to get. No. That the greatness is actually having a relationship with my life and myself. You gotta keep, you, the, don't, you, you don't gotta look to the sides to, yeah. to be yeah. great, to, to try no, to you'll be lose better. No, you'll lose the race if you, you do may be, you'll, you'll get fall. lost maybe. Yes. Because what works for bro won't work for me. Exactly. That not would, necessarily, maybe it yeah. would, but Mix. not necessarily. It, it might give you an idea of something good. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it would not Actually, work for me. I don't know, like, know? what I, I've been trying to get my followers up, so what I learned is that I'm gonna have to go to jail first. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know what I learned? You know what I learned? I'm taking a picture with him and putting it on my Instagram. That's what I learned, because I'm not at 29. Like, bro, say, I'm great. And he's being here all hard on himself. And I'm here looking at him like, what's he talking about? I was just in the movie theater watching Black Adam. <laughs> like, like, oh, like, I was just in the movie theater saying, oh, they killed Marvel. And then he's here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good sometimes, I don't. Like, I finesse down Western Road. Hey, nice. Might go down to GOD. Yeah, wait. I make sure that Northside heat.